What's up, everyone? My name's Chris Marshall with my boy, Frank G. We are the hosts of Build Your Empire podcast. Frank G, tell the people what we do. What's going on, everybody? Chris and I, we discuss established empires while showcasing us building ours. Frank G, define the term theory, please. <clears throat> well, there's two types of theories, really. Are we talking scientific theory or like an informal theory? Because scientific I mean, theory can be backed by evidence. I would imagine the term theory in both contexts is still the same definition, at least the context. Well, because there's theories that can be proven. Scientific theory is something that you... But then that's not a theory no more if it's proven, right? Because a theory is a thought that isn't proven correct yet. All right, so I'll give you the scientific theory. Uh, so in science, a theory presents a concept or idea that is testable, and then you can grab evidence and okay. support. Okay, okay. So, so a theory in scientific terms can, can have evidence. It just has to be quantifiable. Yeah, there's empirical research to it. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, I always thought a theory was just an idea yet to be proven correct. And... You know, it's interesting because I always come up with theories. I have a bunch of theories and I feel mm -hmm. like these theories are eventually lessons that time will tell going through the walks of life. So you're waiting for them to be proven correctly. Yes. And I know I'll one day get the answers, but right now I don't have the answers because the answer essentially right now is time. What is time? Well, I mean, we said very early on when we started the show, ultimately the two things I do not understand and have no concept at all is time and love. I don't, I can't answer that. Time moves so incredibly slow and yet so incredibly fast that the perception of it makes no sense to me. I don't know. To me, that just is the answer right there. What? that you have a lot of time but when you are not in that moment anymore and the time has passed it has gone so fast yeah so that's why people say you have to enjoy and live in the present because i mean if you're living in the past you just live in the past and if you're living in the future you're living in, in an imagination yeah you live in the future you probably have some anxiety or something in the past you might be sad uh, well yeah, yeah, I think that I think that's correct. I think I read that. But I have tons of theories. Like legacy is a theory. A theory that if I provide value to more and more people with the expectation of nothing, eventually those people will get my back. So yeah, I mean, I guess until the until time is, until your outcome. time is up, until your time is up, you won't know if that's true or not. Yeah. I mean, next week, my audience could create financial stability and prove my theory correct. Or it could take me another decade, two, three, four decades of building to prove the theory correct or incorrect. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's good to have that theory because, I mean, it means you're doing something. And Well, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that goes into something I was going to say about that uh, – Luck is not all chance, and luck is not something that is working for or against you. So you are creating legacy, and it something happening from it is not. I'm creating an opportunity. I'm creating my own luck. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but I'm I'm increasing the probability. Well, of, that's yeah. Of manifesting something I'm looking for, which speaking shit into existence seems to be a real thing energy seems to be a real thing theoretically i suppose that's a, another theory of mine at least energy is a real thing i mean i would i would completely agree i mean things you speak about tend to happen or at least that's the energy around you the people you meet and the opportunities in front of you i was gonna say as well that luck is i mean yeah it's you're creating it yourself your perseverance it's your putting yourself in new experiences but then again it's also your mindset because there are people who say there are bad luck, but are you just stuck in a routine that you are not changing? Because, yes, you can have a terrible situation, 
but is there always a bright side out of it? Well, one, you have to understand that increasing your opportunity and probability just simply increases your opportunity and probability. So in a way, you could be unlucky that you don't foreshadow what you expect, right? But you have to be understanding and acceptive that maybe I won't accomplish what I'm trying to. Yeah, I mean, I would also say uh, expect nothing and be prepared for anything. That's a big fact. Now, another theory I have that, uh, you know, I, I think I created or thought while we were recording on a show in the moment which I'm like, shit, that makes tons of sense, is people in a negative frame framework or mentality. They say they have bad luck or they're stuck. Correct. But they, they probably don't have no vision or no nothing to make motivation. Them, no motivation. But outside of trauma or PTSD I, or a chemical imbalance, I think mm. a lack of vision causes a lack of or or causes some sort of depression that's that's a theory of mine here yeah well maybe that as well is the inability for this person to pivot because they have created a path that has i mean i guess if you go through a traumatic experience you are crushed by something mentally or physically but and that's understandable but a lot of people that we speak with on a day-to-day -day, not to you know analyze and assess and be a therapist here a lot of them so-called trauma isn't very traumatic. Well, that goes back to how versatile and flexible you are and what you can, that's mindset. What can you handle? I mean, and Anything. also, and also realizing that bad things do happen, um, but they only last if, you, I mean, God forbid you paralyzed, I guess. So, but you could also make that issue better. It's all in your mind. 100%. Well, obviously it's a much tougher and longer road. So we're not, I'm not saying like it's – I don't want anyone to think I'm looking, talking down on their mindset if they're like going through some tough stuff, but you could certainly turn it around. Well, in fairness, someone going through some tough sh stuff may be a potential bitch dealing with that stuff because in the large scheme of things, it's actually not really artificial to be like sensitive to. But it's hard to communicate that to someone because obviously this – whatever it is affects them too too much yeah well yeah it's because you never know how, how someone handles yeah you. how they handle it and what their perception is of this thing so that you know that's something you learn i've learned anyway through life you can't always tell someone how to you can't tell someone how to feel at all because you don't know what they perceive and how they are dealing with it you know no but what's beginning to happen as i grow older is i'm seeing how my maturity of my mind state is growing more and more enlightened. And I don't know if, if others are, or if they're stuck in, in a certain level of maturity development. I, I don't know what it is, but it seems to be something. Well, I would say that is because your uh, personality or mentality is you're driving the car instead of being driven by the car. So you're kind of grabbing life by the balls and making sure you you know, well, I don't like top. balls, but I'm gonna take those balls. You know what I'm saying? Well, grab, grab life by the boobies, whatever you want. <laughs> Hong Kong, no, but <laughs> uh, it's just fucking guy sets me up. Listen, you, you, you took that pants down your own, your own I, yourself. I know, but as we talk intellectually here, I mean, it's gotta be some sort of entertainment as well. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, damn it, people is a show. <laughs> they're. Could be some people entertained by that, and they certainly could not. But. I don't know, but if you are not, I apologize. It wasn't a funny joke, although we had a laugh. <laughs> well, it's all about perception. What it? What is that? Uh, perception is reality. Perception is reality, and I mean that's a lesson I had to learn in my in my workforce. Which I, I even said that story again today. Um, you know, I have a a, a colleague that works with me. He's twenty four. He just turned 24. I like to think I'm his mentor. So homie comes to me when he has some issues or communication, ver, you know, him versus corporate, I suppose, right? Mm. And like, I'm trying to give him what I think, how I see it, but it's just, it's so unique how the perspective of every person is just so different, vastly different. Well, I guess that goes back to what you've been through and 
how you've handled it in the past. I mean, they could, after whatever they're going through right now, they could completely change. They could be able to uh, see things for what they are and not let it bother them. Like my theory is that kindness and transparency actually sells more than, than I guess, pressure sales or being greedy or being forceful. I don't know. To me, being honest with, I don't know if being honest with a (laughs) person, being honest with the person is a good thing, but it gets complex being honest with a person when they're in your circle. Well, that's the, if it comes, becomes complex, then I guess you're taking into account someone's feelings. And I mean, if you're being honest and trying to help them, it's not a bad thing, but I mean, that totally depends on if you're in the wrong of what you're saying. I don't know. I mean, thinking about it right now, is pretty interesting that to be honest to a stranger for me is much simpler, I suppose, than potentially a loved one, which makes sense. Well, you're not going to tell a stranger that what they're wearing is ugly. You're going to tell your boy what he's wearing is ugly. You're not going to tell your girl that. Oh, that's not always true. You said not always true, making it seem like it's partial true. It could be partially true, but if it's a special night, I'm not going to want her to feel bad. But if it's like a random night, I'd be like, what the, what are you wearing? Okay. So fast forward two years, living in an imagination, saying this is what <laughs> we shouldn't do. Fast forward five years, because two years you may still be just doing you. Uh, I'm with you, kid. Five years. You are now engaged. Your wife comes in, dyed her hair blonde. She's a brunette. Does not look good as a blonde, but she's ecstatic that she's a blonde. You're telling me you just, you just, you just keep it real. I would probably be keeping that real. If that's a real relationship, I would assume keeping it real is a healthy thing. I don't know, man. Dave Chappelle taught us when keeping it real goes wrong, get sure it goes wrong. (laughs) I mean, as long as you're kind about it and you're not like. That Fine. looks terrible. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I, like, babe. <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't know. I, if, I don't know if blonde is your color. I, <laughs> you're not gonna tell her that brunette was said, sure sexy. I, uh, man, that probably is more hurtful. Yeah. Than <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she's not sexy, though, no boy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're already fucking up in the situation. We're like, well, we're, I, we're, yeah. we're prepping. <laughs> We're practicing. <laughs> I'm preparing for five years from now, kid. Oh, but I, I certainly, if she if she dyed her hair on her wedding day, I certainly wouldn't be saying the goddamn thing. I'd let her rock that out. Well, you did say if it's an important event, you're, gonna, you're not going to lie. But <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, blue, what is it called? White lies. I said blue lies. White lies are, are, could be okay. You're not trying to really crush someone, and especially if what you're lying about doesn't matter. But like. Well. Lion's interesting because for the most part, I swear to God, 95% of the time, me at least, more than that, 99, I'm telling the truth. I just simply have nothing to hide. So I have nothing to really lie about unless I'm protecting something, I suppose. Well, I, you could be protecting a bad thing. 100%. So you are 99% honest. I'm pretty damn honest. But, like, if you ask me a question right now, which I don't want to tell the public, to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to answer it. But but I'd answer it to you personally. And, I mean, that goes with another theory I have in which I think you can only – I think someone can only depend on five people in their circle outside of strangers. Yeah, I was going to – well, I was also going to say one of my theories is you never – or I'd say most situations, you never know someone's true intentions. So when you're building a long relationship with someone, I feel like their intentions can be skewed or like you expect something. I don't Well, you can meet someone yesterday that had better intentions than your friend of a decade. Yeah, absolutely. Which, But, but here's the thing. People look at that in a negative viewpoint, saying that the world is an ugly place. And I understand that. But I was talking to this girl a week ago where she was pretty much alluding to that uh, perspective, right? Mm. So I asked her, because she she questioned me. I I put on my Instagram, I put like a heart saying like, I love you all. And she hit me up. She's like, you don't know us. Like, how do you you love us? 
And I was like, all right, well, do you have love for like the world and for, for every, you know, stranger? Yes, I do. Well, if you have that intention, what makes you think that another human being on earth doesn't have the same intention? Well, that's, they're just probably defining love in, I mean, a different way. I'm not saying incorrectly, but uh, I mean, they're thinking love is on a personal level on uh, getting to know someone. I don't know. If you have, I mean, love and like maybe kindness or being confused, but like you have no harm, you have no bad intentions or bad harm for anyone you meet. I just think if you're seeing the world ugly, but you internally are, are beautiful, good intention, which you know that, that is why I see the world that there's more if, good people in it than bad. I think if you see the world ugly, then you have some ugly inside of you. Because why else are you perceiving it as people being ugly? Because well, you potentially think, have ugly things. I don't know. I think there are undoubtedly more good people in this world than bad. But yeah, the world's not on fire, so... If you ask 100 people, it'd probably be 50-50, if not 60-40, that people think the world is bad, not good. Well, I guess we could take that survey. We sure could take that survey. I'm pretty sure I'm right. That's my theory, that I'm right. <laughs> Your theory is that you are right. I get it. You could say it in different like context like i'm correct <laughs> yeah no i mean I, I agree that there's more good people in the world but uh i just think if you're looking at things completely negatively then i mean either i guess you've either been through some stuff or you have done some stuff i mean Look, if you're Jesse from Breaking Bad, you definitely have some PTSD and you have some right to deal with some shit internally. I get it. But I don't know, man. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a brash opinion right now. All right, let's hear it. If you were 30 years old, 40 years old, and you grew up like witnessing a broken household, mm. that is going to change your mentality, and it certainly is probably going to change your behavior within relationships. However, when you mature to a certain age, you shouldn't be uh, using that as a crutch in any facet. That's just me. Now, you have people who have uh, family issues, past issues that are older that need to see a therapist and discuss this. In my head, now, granted, I didn't grow up that way, so I don't know. Mm. But you should have the thought process that that was wrong. I It was unfortunate I was dealt that hand. And I got to move forward. I can't stop. I can't think of that no more. It's a thing in the past. Well, I mean, I guess it's hard to tell someone in that instance how to 100%, act. A hundred percent. But at the same time, it probably should be spoken about because it's hindered, hindering an ability to move forward. Well, maybe they need to speak to someone if they don't have any friends, and I guess they could speak to a therapist. But Oh, we went over that, man. <clears throat> Therapy is useless. Maybe it's not. I don't know. That's just my my. That's opinion. a brash opinion. For that's a brash opinion, 100%. For sure. and, that's my, and that's my opinion. If therapy helps you, great. It's, my it sure seemed to help Tony Soprano. What do you mean? He fucking flipped out in that room a million times until eventually he walked out and was said, you're useless to me. Well, he had some great days, great weeks. Without her, there probably would have just been terrible days, terrible weeks. I He's on feeling pretty good today. That thing you told me last week, it happened. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that was good, kid. That was good. <laughs> Man. Uh. All right. I mean, you know, oh, it, 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 just, it just helps because I'm uh, rewatching it, you know. Just like you spoke about Breaking Bad, something you just watched. Yeah, I mean, I got to get HBO Max. I got to get back on The Sopranos. Uh, I'm watching all these mini clips. It's like I'm fiending to watch the <laughs> series again. Uh -oh. Yeah, one uh, of the best. One of the best. But, uh, I mean, so back to what you said about how if you grew up in, like, that broken home and – um, I don't know, maybe poverty. What I would think, and I don't know how many studies have been out, but if you grew up in something so terrible, I think 
a lot of successful people started in terrible situations, not were like fortunate and good families. Like they built the, the perseverance or the resiliency. I mean, maybe that is mostly with like wealth and poverty, but I, I'm going to also say that being in, you know, a broken home, you wouldn't, you would strive for better. It, I mean, it, it, you're saying that could potentially even be an advantage. It could elevate you in yeah. your situation. I actually had an argument. Uh, again, this is where we got to put this show production together. Cause right now I'd be having social media alert, right. And fucking, cause I'm bringing up a Facebook post here. And it's a mm. good segment. You bring up Facebook post. I had an argument with my brother and it got a little political and I don't like going down political route, uh-huh. but he essentially told me that he was, he was crying for higher minimum wage. Now, I'm not going to get into what I think, what I don't think. <laughs> but he was saying how my views is coming from someone who lived at home and had no expenses for the longest time, right? Had no overhead. My response was at 22, 23 years old, and I'm with my ex-girlfriend, I literally thought to myself, Chris, maybe you should move out to purposely drive ambition to make you more hungry to make it quicker. Do you see, oh, you see, you see my thought process? Yeah, I mean, that certainly could have slowed you down. It would 100% slowed me down, but it would have slowed me down in the micro and in the macro, I think it potentially could have, uh, it, it could have elevated me. Um, I'm glad I didn't go that route, but also all the money I've spent from 20 to 30, which I estimate over 100,000, on clubs, vacations. You would have had to have saved. I would have been more conservative, correct. So his point was useless. Well, that's because you want the experiences. Um, I mean, you want the experiences now as opposed to, I guess, later. Or, I mean, you're going to get them later regardless, maybe because you're of your situation now. But, yeah, I mean, I would be one for spending the money I have if I can to get new experiences, to enjoy life. Well, yeah, but I mean, it it gets, not everybody can enjoy life. But also when we were 20, we were getting minimum wage, which was anywhere from 7.25 to I guess $9 an hour. Yeah, that's why I was selling weight. So we we were dealing with that. I was dealing with that. I would hope, I mean, I know I get everyone's not fortunate and maybe able to be in these places in life but at 32 i hope you're not in a job that's minimum wage so that was actually my argument against my brother for minimum wage look minimum wage you can't blame the employer for giving something where the employee accepts it you should kind of look and fault the employee's mental or mind state to be complacent with accepting this wage yeah at least that's how i view it which which in the end is capitalism. That's fucking yeah, capitalism. yeah, yeah. Well, I because I would assume they're making this minimum wage job because they know they that don't have skills. And they're, yeah, well, there's plenty of people that qualify for minimum wage jobs because there's no qualifications. So you have to learn skills. Yeah, learn skills, provide value, you'll make money, dude. It's incredible how many people are so goddamn greedy. When I swear the formula to make money is to be as least greedy as possible. Well, you're saying so like give more than you take to become successful. Yes. If you give, well, let's go back to my legacy theory, right? The more that I give, eventually I'm going to, I'm, I'm, people are going to give back. Now I'm not expecting a soul to give anything back to me, but I believe that when you give comma, it will give me back. I didn't believe in karma until I got fired and the guy who fired me got fired. And now I believe in karma. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I truly believe in karma, to be honest. Um, I didn't believe in karma neither until that day happened. I got fired and then that jerk off got fired. I was like, karma the real thing. Yeah, but you put that guy in that situation. So that's like you not believing in luck. You just made that happen. I did make that happen. I told everyone he showed his penis. Yeah, that guy certainly should have been fired. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, he, oh, he, he didn't show his penis in the, the office. He told a story no. about showing his penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he uh, goes, you're right. You're right. You got to clarify. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> One's much, much worse, I guess, right? <laughs> in the public, in, in a professional setting. Yeah, no, you can't just be whipping out your dog, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, personally, and I've said this in videos that we can't show. Tits, ass, penis, it's all the same. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all, we all have these body parts, man. Yeah, you might as well we just all, walk around naked. We were all born naked anyway. So Yeah, so... Back I mean, in the day, I would have just had a cloth covering me. <laughs> and that's just so something don't nag on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sure can't glad. be a caveman having that thing like catch on something. Oh, I know. I can't be. I can't be running after a wild boar, jumping over rocks, and then oof, something <laughs> just snagging. Oh man, where are we gone? <laughs> I mean, it, it just tends to happen sometimes. It is. It does. One minute we on. Twenty six. Twenty six minutes. A show of theories. You know, it's interesting because these are our theories. If we actually break down into scientific theories, that even gets more uh, intriguing for sure. Yeah, and I'm sure there's unlimited amounts of theories out there with the billions of people out there. So, Well, I, I know I have dozens of theories, but like they just, you know, thoughts are, thoughts are different. Thought, thoughts are odd, I should say. They come in and out yeah. randomly. Yeah, and I mean, although this is a money about you know business success, uh, empire, and accumulation of I well, guess. Well, what money. do you mean? I know where you're going with this, and not necessarily the show's about building an empire and financial freedom. Yeah, our theories are showcasing the mind state in which needed. I mean, the whole lesson I hope from this is that people have theories, and that they're they're measuring them throughout their lifespan. Well, if you didn't interrupt me, I could have finished what I my thought. Sorry, I just had to make sure it was clear. But uh, we do speak about success and wealth and, you know, the perseverance of creating something. But the end goal, I guess, which is financial freedom, is not your sole happiness. Doing all these things, giving more than you're taking, um, creating, these are the things that will make you happy, not money. So that's another well, theory. Well, wait a second. Because when we mean financial freedom – we would hope that that's gained from a, a beloved passion. Yeah. Well, we which hope, would yes. create happiness. Otherwise, you're working a nine to five and you could probably create financial freedom through investments and uh, exactly. Um, that's my so another theory is that money does not buy happiness, which is probably a very common theory. And it sure as hell puts a damn good down payment. Yeah. Well, I mean, it don't give you respect or good friends, I guess, or uh, loved ones. I mean, health. it could. It um, gets what? you fake everything, bro. Yeah, bro. that's fake. You just said fake. Yeah, everything's fake. I mean, the women you get, bro, it, it pisses me off that if I drive an $80,000 car with 20000 on my wrist, I'm more likely to get women, yet I have a $100,000 stock portfolio on like $1,000 dividends every couple of months, but they don't know that at all. And yeah. The system's fucked. That's because you're not talking about it. To, I mean, if you find a woman who is also intrigued about that, She's probably impressed. And that's probably the woman you want to be with, not the person who likes you roly. I don't Although know. The person I who mean, likes you roly might be hot, and I see why you might go for her, but you do want some brains in there. But what well, there is no brains in there. She don't know the cars rented. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure as hell I didn't tell her I lied to a stranger. Well, I guess that <laughs> I guess that's the one percent right there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> six nine sloppy toppy in the Maserati. Oh boy, six nine. He was getting me tight on social media, to be honest. He's been getting me tight, but I guess that's actually his niche now. He's yeah, getting people tight. He's yeah, getting me tight, and now I'm liking him because he's getting me tight. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's impressive that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he plays a troll. Everybody's like sick of him, and yet. You're watching it. It, it. it don't make no sense. Still talking about him. It don't make no goddamn sense. I mean, he pretty much said, if you guys don't want to hear from me, stop talking about me. Stop putting me in your songs. But, I mean, he's just probably trying to downplay the rat role and get through it. Seems to be doing all right, though. 
Oh okay. man, I don't know. I had I had an argument with a kid yesterday on fucking one of the comments. This is where I need that button. Button. Social media alert. Social media comment. Damn. Yeah, but I mean, bro, you can't be getting a ten million dollar record deal, spending one million on a chain by yeah. house his cause. Yeah. He was I... on he was on Logan Paul's podcast and Logan Paul flat out asked him, like, yo, what are you doing with your assets? Like you're not you're not scared. I mean, he don't seem scared. No, I predict he's actually going to go broke, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Yo, so March 17th, your boys got to speak in front of peeps. I'll post more about it, but I have to create a deck. I have to create a slide. I have to present sales, marketing, and branding here. I have to discuss a lot of things we discuss. Yeah, I was just going to say that sounds easy since we discuss it. We, yeah, but I have to do it for 20 minutes. Well, just make sure you make a PowerPoint long enough to hit 20 minutes. I don't even know how to create a PowerPoint. You download PowerPoint. All right. <laughs> I created a PowerPoint presentation once, and that was in a job interview. I wooed the first interviewee so good that she made sure to get me in two days later because the vice president was leaving for a month and they wanted to get me in before he left. So I had to create a PowerPoint presentation of like whatever they were selling. Let me tell you something that did not go well. <laughs> oh, well, I guess you learned from that. And hopefully uh, you learn from this, that when your new PowerPoint that you make for March 17th. Yes, yes, I did. I learned do not memorize the entire sheet of loose leaf. And and sound sound like you memorized the entire sheet of loose leaf. Like monotone. Monotone. Also, like you know, when you're trying to memorize the entire sheet of loose leaf, you may hesitate for like three seconds to find the next word. That you know? certainly happens. That's why I told you I write things down, especially I wrote, speeches. I wrote this down. I just well, if you hope you didn't read from it with your head down the whole time. <laughs> no, it just didn't go well. Needless to say, I didn't get the job. Yeah, well, you learn from it and, you know, it was part of the journey. Part of the joint? The journey. But, I mean, uh, if you want it to be part of the joint. New Jersey just legalized marijuana today. So, hopefully I buy a house in New Jersey and be part of the joint. Recreationally? I didn't even hear that. Recreationally, it is now legal starting today. My man... Interesting that I didn't hear that, but we made it. We <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, there's a dispensary across from my job, so we're gonna end this show, but I'm just gonna end it with four words. Cause Chris Chronic cares. You heard it here, Chris Chronic cares. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>